our two deaths felt pretty preventable. It was just a little bit of bad positioning. We're gonna jump in, get the slow onto the Poseidon. We're gonna use our ultimate, get a basic, throw our three. He's one shot. Nox is able to clean up the Poseidon. We walk into the Kugel and we're gonna fall back. Nox goes down, Ardeo's here. We're gonna blink, get the two, and then we're gonna run away. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shiny V Gaming, and today we're doing a skin showcase for the Shadow Howler Hun Fat Skin. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for some more content. If you are a returning viewer, you guys know I don't usually like to blame other people or get that mad at other people, but boy does this soul laner know how to start off a game. Hunbats is really good at doing some abilities. He has a really good team fighting ultimate. We just need our team to be there to help us clean up. So let's go ahead and jump into his kit. Hunbats is one. Somersault. Hunbats is going to flip through the air, crash down on a target location, dealing damage to all nearby enemies and slowing them for two seconds. The slow is going to be 20% at level 1, and it goes up to 40% at level 5. Hunbats is 2, overhand smash. Hunbats is going to smash his staff to the ground in front of him in a cone attack, dealing damage to all enemies. Hunbats is 3, sacred monkey. Hunbats is going to throw a monkey forward in a line attack. If it hits an enemy, it is going to bounce between nearby enemies. It can only hit an enemy god once, but it can hit minions multiple times. The monkey is going to bounce 4 times total. And if Hunbats presses the button again, Hunbats is going to be able to teleport to the next target. Hunbats is ultimate. Fear no evil. Hunbats summons a totem from the ground to ward off all evil. If an enemy is caught within the radius, it is feared directly away from the totem and takes damage every 0.25 seconds. At level 1, the lifetime of the ultimate is 1 second, and then at level 5, the ultimate lasts for 2 seconds. And Humbats is passive, and few strikes. After using an ability, Humbats' next basic attack will deal 15% increased damage. This will work really well with items like Erendite and Hydra's Lament. So let's go ahead and address what this Kukulkan is complaining about. He's upset that I hit his blue without him, but that's just the rotation these days, you know? It's not our fault, he has no idea what's going on. So we're just gonna rotate to mid, do our thing, kind of ignore him. He did distract me a little bit, got me to use an ability on my Harpy camp instead of using the of the Gods. But we're off to the races, and in terms of the leveling order, at level 1 you want to put a point into your 3, level 2 you want to put a point into your 2, level 3 you want to put a point into your 1. Then you want to max out your 3, max out your ultimate whenever you can, max out your 2, then max out your 1 last. We left Fountain with the Jungler's Blessing, the Mace, Tier 1 Mace, a Health Potion, Hand of the Gods, and Blink. This will allow us to get a lot of damage in the early game. We had kind of a sloppy first rotation, but we should be able to clean it up. So every time we kill or destroy a minion, jungle camp minion, we're going to get a small heal from the jungler's blessing. It's going to provide some health and some mana. They're very weak in mid. We're going to come in here and try to do something. We blink in. We miss our jump. Not a great start. Now we're going to run. We missed everything. Nox had to back because she was pretty weak. Our speed is up, so we're just going to go ahead and back. We're going to pick up our tier 2 boots. Whenever we back, ideally, we want to get our tier 2 boots over tier 1 boots, because tier 1 boots do not provide any power. The camps gain health and protections as the game goes on, so we want to keep increasing our power so our clear time stays about the same. And here it comes. The spam that we're bad. We're gonna go ahead and now hit our Harpy Camp. Just doing some pretty standard rotations.
our damage is up, so we're probably going to hit that after we help Nox with this wave. We just got our ultimate. He's kind of close to his tower line for us to try to ult him. We're just going to play it safe, rotate to our red buff, get the gold and XP. I feel like as a jungler, playing it safe is usually your best option. Great ult from that Kukyo. I don't think he had vision. I think that was a blind shot. Really good ult from him. Luckily, we secured the red, but he did take out the Nox and take out a lot of my health. We're going to go ahead, rotate mid, clean up this minion wave, get some of the XP from these minions. They're probably at their red buff right now. This Nike is less than half health. We do have our ultimate, so we're going to rotate over, see if we can help out. We're going to go the long way, just make sure that we're really behind her here. We use our ultimate, we hit her with our three, and we're able to clean her up between that damage. We're going to go ahead and back because our speed is about to respawn. We're going to be going into Warrior Tabai to provide us a decent power spike. With Humbats, you do have a jump, so you want to make sure you're either jumping from Fountain or jumping over the speed wall. You want to utilize that jump in your movement around the map. I think this skin is pretty cool. I really like the aesthetic of it. Really cool design. I think it'd be cool if it somehow changed colors. I feel like I'm just a sucker for skins that change colors. Humbats does have an attack chain. So just based off our power level, it was 136, less than that, and then higher than 136. So the first hit is a normal hit, second hit is a little bit weaker than a normal hit, and then the third hit is stronger than normal. Two people weak in left. We do not have our ultimate. They just set up a ward, so we're probably not going to try to rotate over. They just got vision on us. Oh, we change our mind. They're pretty weak. We're going to blink in, use our two, get some good damage. We're able to throw our three, get the pick onto the Scotty. We miss our slow. Neath ult incoming. We're going to get a basic, and the Neath ult is able to clean up the RDO. And another great Cuckoo ult that <laughs> hits me and Nox and is able to take out the Nox. We were trying to wait for our jump, unfortunately, he is able to get us. So we rotated left, and then the enemy mid laner rotated to follow up. That was a really good rotation from him. We cleaned up two people, then he cleaned up two people. Taking a look at the enemy team composition, they do not have any major, major heals, so we're probably not going to be going into brawlers right away. If we were going against an Aphrodite, a Chongi, or some solo laner that really heals a lot, then we'd probably go into Brawler's Beat Stick. With starting with the Tier 1 Mace, you have the option of going into the Crusher, yo Ins, or going into Brawler's Beat Stick. Each item kind of has its own purpose. yo Ins is great for cooldown. Brawler's is great for the utility of having anti-heal, and the Crusher just provides the most damage. We're going to go ahead and secure our blue buff, even though our soul laner is not here to take it. We do have our ultimate. The soul laner's not there, we're going to set up a ward, so we can start trying to get some vision. We're going to go ahead and work on his harpy, take a little bit of XP away from him. He just used his dash, we're going to come in, use our ultimate, and we're able to clean him up with our three. Poseidon's rotating in, we don't really have our kit to fight him with. We're going to set up a ward so we know if Poseidon's rotating in. We're going to be a little aggressive. We use our three, we miss it, so we're going to run away. 
Enemy Scotty's here. Scotty's able to get the Nox. We're gonna use our two onto the Poseidon. And we go down to the Poseidon ultimate and three combination. We were just a little too aggressive right there. Looks like Jeb's about to solo the Scotty. Love to see that. Nice hitting her buttons pretty well. So after going into Warrior Tabai, we're going to be going into Jotun's Wrath. Jotun's Wrath is going to provide us 40 power, 150 mana, 10 flat penetration, and 20% cooldown. This item has really good stats, so it is not going to have a passive. Jeb commits a smart play and goes under tower, so that way the enemy team cannot get the pick on him. He just goes down to the tower. So of the three stars between the Crusher, Brawlers, and Jotuns, we're opting to go into Jotuns so we can use our ultimate a little bit more. We have our ult in about 10. We use our ultimate, we hit our buttons, and we're able to get the pick onto the Cuckoo. Poseidon's kind of rotating in, so we're just going to fall back. We check the enemy red buff. It's not there. We're going to set up a ward. Go ahead and hit the harpy. We're waiting to see if Poseidon oversteps right here. Scott is rotating behind us, so we got to be a little careful. We can't just sit there and wait for Poseidon anymore. Jeb's here now. Hopefully he's taking a few abilities for us and put something on cooldown from the enemy team. We're going to go ahead and rotate to our back right harpies. We want to continuously be getting gold and XP. We don't want to sit in any lane too long. There's the Poseidon. We're going to hit our two. Wiggle around a little bit. Bunch of people here. We're going to jump away. A lot of the times with Thumbats, we don't want to jump in to initiate. We want to try to save our jump to get out of there. We use our two, get some good damage. We throw our monkey. We're going to jump. Jeb's able to get the pick onto one. We're going to use our two. We're able to get the pick onto the Cuckoo. RDO is pretty weak. We have our ultimate in a second. And Jeb's able to clean her up. Is that a soft double for Jeb. We're going to throw our ultimate to cancel Nike out of her one, then we're going to jump away. So that was a very defensive ultimate. We didn't quite have our jump, but we didn't know how much damage we could take. So we use our ultimate to buy us a second, and then we jump away. We're going to go ahead and rotate to the blue buff. I think at this point in the game, the Cuckoo realizes that I'm not a, or that I am a half-decent jungler, so he kind of leaves me alone. <laughs> I think he's doing alright in his lane matchup, but a Cuckoo so, like, front line is not going to be very helpful in the late game. We use our three, we're going to jump in, we get a basic attack, we're going to jump as well, we apply as slow, get another basic attack. Waiting for her two to expire. We're gonna use R2, get some good damage. Use a basic, use another basic, and we're able to clean up the Nike. Hey, whoa, what 180. Now he's throwing out a nice job. For a second relic, we're gonna go into Aegis. They have three ultimates we're kind of concerned about. The Cuckoo ult, the Poseidon ult, and the Scotty ult. Aegis is gonna be helpful for all three of them. So right now, we're 6, 2, and 4. We're having a pretty good no mid game. Our two deaths felt pretty preventable. It was just a little bit of bad positioning. We're going to jump in, get the slow onto the Poseidon. We're going to use our ultimate, get a basic, throw our three. 
He's one shot. Nox is able to clean up the Poseidon. We walk into the Kugel and we're gonna fall back. Nox goes down. Ardeo's here. We're gonna blink, get the two, and then we're gonna run away. So Ardeo's stun right there does not deal damage. So I was able to just blink once I became unstunned. Making a play for the Scotty. We hit her with her three. We're going to hit her with her two. She's very weak. And Neath is able to clean her up. And we're able to clean up the Ardeo with our two. So things are looking, looking pretty well for our team. So after going into Jotun's, we're going to be going into Hydra's Lament. Hydra's Lament is going to provide us 40 physical power, 10% cooldown reduction, and 10 MP5. For 8 seconds after an ability is cast, our next basic attack is going to deal an additional 40% damage. We are also going to gain 2.5 MP5 per 10% of our missing mana. So this item is going to enhance our basic attack after we use an ability, which ties in really well with Humbats' passive. And it is also going to help us regenerate some mana with MP5. MP5 is the amount of mana you gain every 5 seconds. We're going to come in, use our ultimate, we're going to use our 3, use our 2, use one shot, and the Nox is able to get the pick onto the Cuckoo. All is looking good this game. Poseidon's here, we're going to be a little careful. Go ahead and just jump away. On my way. I'll attack right lane. Scotty's in left. In the right. We're gonna kind of loop behind. We're gonna use our two, get some good damage. We're gonna use our three. We're gonna jump, get a basic, and we're able to clean up the Scotty. So we do have enough money for Erendite, we'll probably pick that up as soon as we back. We have 25 seconds left on our speed timer, so we're going to go ahead and back. Erendite is going to provide us 75 physical power, 10% cooldown. Whenever we ult, we're going to reveal all enemy gods within 120 units for 8 seconds. While moving towards enemies, we're going to gain 30% movement speed. Our next basic attack is going to deal 40 damage plus 30% of our physical power. This effect can only occur once every 45 seconds. So whenever we ult and land a basic attack, we're getting the passive from Hydra's, we're getting the passive from Erendite, and we're getting the passive from Hondas' passive. Right there, that was a ult trying to target out the Poseidon. I did not expect their entire team to start crashing down. It would be much more effective to have our ultimate like in this spot, for example, and then for the single target onto Poseidon. So their soul laner makes it to the team fight before our soul laner. That's a cursed onk. We're not going to dash in on her. We're going to dash away. Dash to safety. Nisi will get the pick onto Scotty. We're going to come in. We miss our monkey. Oh, we hit our monkey. We teleport in. We're gonna use our one to get away. They have a lot of weak people. Our team is kind of scattered in mid. We get tagged by the Cuckoo, three. We're gonna go ahead, clear camp, try to regenerate some health and mana. We do have our ultimate if these people will overstep. We're gonna set up a ward because we saw a Nike coming towards us and then we're just gonna fall back. After going into Erendite, we're going to be going into Heartseeker. Heartseeker is going to provide us 65 physical power, 200 mana, 20 MP5, and 10% penetration. 
It has a passive that whenever we land an ability, it's going to remove 2% of the target's maximum health. This effect can scale up. It starts scaling up at 200 physical power and caps out at 400 physical power. The scale caps out at 5% maximum health. Subsequent hits deal 75% of the bonus damage for the next 3 seconds. We're going to cast our ultimate. Just kind of peel away. That was a very bad ultimate. We land her too. We hit her with the monkey. We're thinking about jumping in, but that would put us in a pretty dangerous spot. We're going to jump in. We're going to slow. Activate her too. She uses her ultimate. Poseidon ults us. We use our Aegis. We're going to jump away. We're kind of hanging out on the outskirts of this fight, waiting to see if there's anything that we can do. We're going to go ahead and clear these camps, try to get some golden XP. We miss our monkey, we're going to use our two, and we're able to clean up the Poseidon. And unfortunately, Cuckoo cast his three over the wall and is able to get us. I thought we were safe. I thought we were backing out of there. We just used our Aegis previously in that team fight. Unfortunate. Good play by him, though. The enemy team destroys the Gold Fury. That was the first Gold Fury, so it was just a normal Gold Fury. It's just going to provide the enemy team some gold. Speaking of which, we are ahead in gold and ahead in kills up to this point in the game. We're going to go ahead and rotate to our speed buff, Harpies, and then probably help out mid since the Cuckoo on our team went ahead and dropped blue buff. He doesn't need us to rotate over. Bit of a team fight going on in mid. We're going to rotate in, try to help out. Looks like they're going for their red buff. We're going to go ahead and just drop these mid harpies. Cuckoo's here. Ardeo is also here. I'm sure she saw us, so we're going to go ahead and try to loop around. Right here, we're just looking for a good spot to engage. We, we blink in. Kind of just waste our blink. There's a there's an opening for us to use our ultimate right there. Looks like there's four people in mid. We're gonna jump over the wall so we can kind of sneak up on them. They're going into the team fight. We're gonna use our ultimate. Use our three onto the Scotty. She uses her bees and Aegis. We're gonna jump away. We get ulted by Poseidon. We're looking pretty weak. We're gonna fall into jungle. The cuckoo ult misses. We're gonna pop a health potion. We're gonna go ahead and drop the red buff. Heal off of it real quick. Maybe we should be trying to help in the team fight, or maybe we should have just backed right there. Nucky's able to get the pick. Scotty's able to get the pick. It is now a 5v3. Things are not looking good for us. Nice able to get one. We're going to go ahead and back. Try to play it safe. We're going to pick up Heartseeker. Heartseeker is going to allow us to deal some damage to some of their tankier characters like Nike and Ardeo. I don't know. Maybe we should have waited for our ultimate and tried to help that Jeb out. Maybe we should have backed before going for the red buff. Either way, I think we could have improved our play right there. We're going to go help Neath with the Pyromancer.
then land an ability, then our basic attack, then we're just going to basic attack it down. We could have used a ability, basic attack, ability, basic attack, ability, basic attack for the maximum amount of damage. Artie is here, she just stuns us. We're just gonna kinda walk away. We're gonna go ahead and work on the enemy red buff. Okay, now we're in a bad spot, we're gonna jump away. We lost about 600 health. Was that just, no, we landed on the ice. I was gonna say, was that just from the dog bite? Mid's getting collapsed on. We're trying to find a good engagement. We go ahead and drop our red buff. Poseidon's rotating on Jeb. Looks like they're crashing on Jeb. Jeb might be the distraction we need for a good engagement. Oh, we just need to get in there. We got spooked by the uh, Cuckoo. We're going to use our three, get some damage onto the Nike. We accidentally teleport into the Poseidon Whirlpool. We're gonna go ahead and back. Scotty's cleaning up left tower. Our team, their team's collapsing on our soul laner. We're gonna go ahead and pick up our speed. They're crashing on our tower. We get our three onto the cuckoo. We land our two. We're gonna jump. He's immune to slows. We get knocked back by the Poseidon. We use our Aegis to avoid his ultimate. We're gonna jump away. They're just collapsing on us much better than we're collapsing on them. We're starting to lose every team fight. can't tell what's going on this game in terms of why we're losing these team fights. I feel like I'm being a little bit passive on the initiation. I feel like they're grouped really well compared to us. I was playing with our mid laner Nox and even he would admit that he wasn't having the best game. I feel like we did really well in the early and mid game. Now we're kind of struggling a little bit. But the skin look cool though. So we sold our jungler's blessing for tier 2 mantle of discord mantle of discord is going to provide us 60 magical and 60 physical protections it is also going to give us 10 percent cooldown which is going to bring us over the cap but ideally we would sell our boots and then sell yoan's wrath for some more damage or maybe some more utility so even though we're breaking the cap i think mantle of discord is just that good of an item it has a passive that if we fall below a certain health threshold, we're going to become CC immune and unleash a shockwave that's going to stun enemies. Should really help our survivability in these team fights. We would probably sell our boots for Titan's Bane and then probably our Jotun's Wrath for a Blood Forge. We do have our ultimate. We're waiting for them to group. We should definitely go for a squishy character. We're gonna blink in, use our ultimate. We are able to get the Cuckoo. He uses his Bees Aegis. We're gonna fall back a little bit. We're able to get the pick onto one. That's a Neath ultimate. Poseidon's here. We miss our three. 
We hit him with our one. We're in a terrible spot. We're going to jump out. We're pretty low on health. Nike's here. And we're going to go down to the Nike. Looks like Neath is also in trouble. I feel like if we would have hit that monkey, we would have gotten the Poseidon. I think we probably would have gone down either way. They have a good front line between Ardeo and Nike. I think. I don't think a Jeb and Cuckoo front line are really comparable. Nike can get in there and mess things up. Ardeo is great for CC. Jeb's got a knock up and is very helpful, but the Cuckoo just does not provide that kind of utility. Well, that's going to be the end of this one. We took the L. Sometimes it's just how the mop flops. I feel like Cuckoo kind of knows he picked a bad god for solo lane. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. The stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.